Hi, it's Simon. I'm currently off on my travels in New Zealand and found myself using my iPad a lot more for work and downtime. So today, I'm gonna to share with you my favorite iPad secrets that many people don't know exist. They truly unlock this piece of glass to be a super fast and enjoyable tool for getting things done, getting creative, or just chilling on a Sunday. Let's go. Number one, use Spotlight. You can use Spotlight to navigate faster. Command space or swipe down from the top and search any app name or file and drag and drop them to multitask. Or just search the web directly from here. You can even find photos, music, weather or emails from your mail app in this space. Now for some weird reason, iPad has never had a calculator. Well, you don't really need to download a third party one. Just use Spotlight and type into it and Spotlight will convert measurements and do calculations for you. All that lovely math stuff from the search bar. Next, use Scribble. The Apple Pencil is for me the tool that makes the iPad a truly powerful tool for many people. And notably, what distinguishes it from a laptop or a phone. Now, I won't go into loads of detail about the Apple Pencil here because you can just watch my Apple Pencil tips video by the description after this. But my favorite use case is using the pencil to navigate and then using the scribble function to search for things when you don't have a keyboard with you. Just write text into the search bar and use a dash to add a space to quickly find things in the Spotlight tool. Or in Notes or a writing app, you can use scribble to turn writing immediately to text. Check it out and my Apple Pencil video after this. Oh, and a bonus pencil tip. Tap on the lock screen when it's closed to open a quick note. Love it. Some system-wide functions you need to know about. Now, I think the iPad is best when you use it with your hands, not a keyboard. So these are my favorite system-wide gestures that make it much faster and more pleasurable to use. A three-finger tap will bring up the cut, copy, paste menu really quickly, or even better, a three-finger pinch will copy something like text or an image, and then a three-finger outward pinch, like a hip <laughs> What is that in reverse? Anyway, this pastes it, sorry, into the app like notes, emails, or anything else. Three finger swipes to the left undoes an action. Three finger swipes to the right redoes an action. That's a game changer. Seriously, I love that because I make a lot of mistakes. And swiping up from the bottom left allows you to now make a screenshot. Really cool. Now, if you want to edit the corner swipes, just go to the settings and adjust what happens where. Now, your iPad is a scanner. Did you know that? This is a great secret. Go to files, click and hold on the blank space in the folder, and it will open the option to scan using the camera. So powerful for doing things like signing documents, capturing receipts, or bits of printout that you need to have in your digital files. Customize your iPad. Now then, did you notice my iPad looks a little different to the usual? That's because I've customized the look to get a calmer, more coherent aesthetic. You know, us Apple fans just love a bit of minimal design, right? Well, if you'd like to do the same, I'm here to help. I've got a full video on how to customize your iPad or iPhone in iOS 16. It's linked below. And even better, today's video sponsor is well me. You can get my custom iOS icon and cover packs over at bettercreating.com and follow the video to completely transform your iPad to a calm, custom setup. We've got six variants of the icons, white on black, black on white, black and white gradients, and most satisfyingly, transparent gradients that then allow you to customize colors using the Shortcut app. We've also included a bunch of black and white covers for iPhone and iPad, and you can even choose options to disappear the background dock. Yeah. Now these custom widgy widget templates also come with a pack so you can easily download widgy for free, install our template designs and then edit the tab functions to link to the apps that you want and away you go. I'm super chuffed with these new icon packs, how they came out, so download via the link in the description and I hope you enjoy them. Number five is hidden software keyboard tricks. Now, as I say, I'm away from home at the moment and don't have a keyboard for my iPad with me since I'm using my laptop. But if I do need to type something, I just use the software keyboard on the iPad. A full board is available on the 12.9 inch and if you pull down on each key, it will give you the alternative characters for the button. That's a cool little secret. And you can also pinch the keyboard to make it a compact view. And in that view, you can use the iOS style swipe function to type if you like. Two little secrets you might not have spotted. So number six is control center tricks. You can use globe C in the keyboard 
push the cursor up to the right corner or swipe to the top right corner to access the control center. I love that I can set things like the screen to lock its rotation when I want to keep a notes app feeling more like a notepad when I'm showing people things or doing a presentation. In Control Center though, you can manage a load of settings. You can add and remove options for your Control Center view in the Settings app. And you also have the option to add different tools like switching focus modes, taking a voice note, or even turning Stage Manager on and off. But I'm really loving the playback management here. I can control playback, but if you click on the AirPlay button in the top right corner of that widget, you can also send sound to different devices you have connected. Here you can see my laptop, but this could be AirPods, HomePods, or anything else grouped together, whatever you feel. Secret trick number seven is better view choices. Slide over, split view, and stage manager. There are various options for viewing apps on an iPad. Not all of them are for everyone. Having the option though, I think is great, I guess. Each to their own. So, split view is a great one for working across two apps. Dragging the center line is a nice way to give you more space on the app you need when you need it. I love split view for taking notes in a meeting, for example, whilst also viewing reference material at the same time. You can drag apps from the bar at the bottom to create a split view, or even drag them from Spotlight, which is my favorite. You can also pair apps in a split view using the app switcher view. Swipe up from the bottom and see this, or use three fingers on your trackpad. Long pressing on an app is another good trick to be able to then show all windows open for that app. Dragging an app over the center of two apps also allows you to drop it as a slide overview, a mobile sized view that you can float over the other apps and then hide away. I personally love this for things like Spotify music or a third party calculator. Stage Manager allows you to go even further these days, resizing windows and moving them to predetermined sizes and views. A sixth generation iPad Pro or an M1 iPad Air is the minimum required to use it, but you can jump between apps on the menu like this, resize windows and drag them around using the top part of each tab. It's a little more like a desktop computer. Personally though, I'm not a big fan of Stage Manager. I don't find I use it much, but what I would say is if you do use it, one of the best options for it has to be if you have a M series chip iPad is to use it with a third party monitor, an external monitor. As a final tip, try holding down the globe key on your keyboard connected to an iPad to show you all the system shortcuts for your iPad. Nice. If you want to go further with your iPad and find the best third party apps for getting productive or creative, check out one of these videos next. And if you're still here, make sure to subscribe because I've got more great ideas, tools and tech on making your life a little better. Drop me a comment below on the tips you love that we didn't cover here and I'll see you on the next one.